Welcome to the Creating Embedded Enterprise OneForm Content tutorial. This tutorial is for users who are enabled to the composite application framework with permission to create layouts and content. This tutorial demonstrates how to create a content frame that contains an Enterprise One application form. The enabled form is the Work With Addresses form. The other content on this layout are Embedded Enterprise One application forms and a web page URL. To create new content, open the framework in edit mode by clicking the personalization arrow and then clicking edit current page. We want to create the content on a new personal layout, so click add new layout from the layout drop down list. Now only the enabled Enterprise One form shows on the Framework workspace. We want to create new content that enables users to review customer invoices and receipts. To do this, we will click the Create New Content link. And on the pop-up window, click on the Enterprise One form icon and drag and drop it onto the Framework workspace. The in-work content frame is named Create Link to Embedded Enterprise One Form. The Link Information section identifies the Enterprise One Form that we want to embed. We'll type the Customer Ledger Inquiry Application ID, which is P03B2002, in the Application field, and on the keyboard we will press Tab. When we press Tab, Enterprise One automatically enters information in the remaining fields in this section. Enterprise One finds and creates a list of the forms that we can use for this content based on the application ID we entered and the Enterprise One data structure for form interconnects. Enterprise One enters the first form from the list of forms in the form field. Click the form drop-down arrow to see the available forms, which are listed alphabetically. We will select the Work with Customer Ledger Inquiry form. Enterprise One finds and creates a list of the versions that are available and enters the first version from the list in the version field. Click the version drop down arrow to see the available versions, which are listed alphabetically. We will select the Customer Ledger Inquiry ZJDE0001 version. The name field is a required field, and Enterprise One automatically enters the application ID, form number, and version name from the previously selected fields. You can change this entry. The value in this field is the name of this content in the Enabled Forms repository. We will leave the name that Enterprise One entered. The Description field is an optional field, and Enterprise One automatically enters the form name as the description. The value in this field becomes the title of this content in layouts on the composite application framework. You can change the description to a more meaningful name. If the description field is blank, the title of this content frame will be the value that is in the name field. We will rename the description to Customer Ledger Inquiry, Customer Number Map to Address Number, which I will copy from my clipboard. This name identifies to users the form and indicates that the customer number field on this form is dynamically linked to the address number field on the enabled form. The automatically find on entry option is available only when find browse forms are used as embedded content. Enterprise One automatically selects this option. With this option selected, the embedded form automatically shows data in the form's grid rows. When this option is not selected, users must click Find to see data in the form's grid rows. The What Type of Links section determines whether the information on this form stays the same regardless of the information on the enabled form or whether this form automatically updates to show relevant information when the enabled form is changed. We will select the Dynamic Link option, which means the data on this form automatically updates when the enabled form is changed. 
To create a dynamic link, click the drop-down arrow next to the parameter that you want to map, and then click Is Map To. We will create a dynamic link for the address number parameter. On the Enabled form, Work with Addresses, click the gold plus sign in the Address Number Grid Row column. The Data Dictionary alias for the selected field on the Enabled form appears in the Parameter Value column. It is important that you map embedded content parameters with compatible fields on the Enabled form. The parameters and fields should be the same data type, such as character to character, numeric to numeric, and so on. The When Do You Want to See the Content Frame section determines whether the embedded form always appears on a layout or appears on a layout only when a value that you specify is entered on the enabled form. We will use the Always option, which means this content will always appear on a layout. Defining when to see content is done the same way for embedded application forms and web page URLs. Selecting the Sometimes option is demonstrated in the Creating Content Using a Web Page URL tutorial. Now we'll save this content by clicking the Save icon on the content title bar. We will move this content on the framework to be under the enabled form by placing the cursor in the title bar, clicking and holding the left mouse button, and moving the content. We will place this content on a new layout by clicking the Save As Layout option. On the Enter Layout Name pop-up window, name the layout Review Customer Ledger, which I have on my clipboard. And click OK. We want to resize the content. To do this, place the cursor between the enabled form and the new content frame until you get a blue bar, and then move the bar up or down. We will move it up. Save this change by clicking Save Layout on the Framework toolbar. Close the Framework Edit Mode by clicking the Close icon on the Framework toolbar. Now we'll test the content to ensure that it works as intended. Note that the title bar on the embedded content frame is highlighted in gold, which indicates that the content is dynamically linked to the enabled form. Let's resize the content frame. To verify that the content is working correctly, we'll select address number 3001 on the enabled form. The embedded Enterprise One form content frame shows data for customer number 3001, which is what we expect. We can scroll down to see more of the embedded form. We can also scroll on the grid row scroll bar to see additional records for this customer. When we click the right facing arrow, we can see more records for this customer. There are 33 ledger records for this customer. Next we'll select address number 505 on the enabled form. The embedded Enterprise One form content automatically changes to show customer number 505. However, there are no records for this customer. Let's select address number 3003 on the enabled form. 
the embedded form content changes to show three records for customer 3003. The content is working as expected. Congratulations! You have completed the Creating Embedded Form Content tutorial. This tutorial demonstrated how to create embedded Enterprise OneForm content that is dynamically linked to the enabled form, and it showed how to move the content on the framework workspace and save the content to a new layout. It also showed how to resize the content on the framework workspace and save the change to the same layout. And this tutorial showed how to test the content.